Let me get this so I can get the music going. Oh, man. Jesus. ready can you go ahead and open up in prayer thank you jesus dear i mean now when you're ready apostle dear heavenly father lord thank you for this beautiful time we have tonight thank you for allowing us for one more night to come serve you and learn about you lord god i pray that you open up our ears to hear and hearts to understand lord god and i pray a special blessing over apostle mccoy's life bless tonight lord god that you would just work through and speak to her tonight as she teaches on double demons and deliverance, Lord God. And I pray that you would just have your way in our life. Show up and show out in our life tonight. And just decrease us and increase you in our life tonight. Give us a heart to understand and, and to just learn whatever you want us to learn tonight, Lord God. Like I said, have your way because you said when two or more gather in your name, you're here. And I pray for the ones coming on tonight and the ones not able to come on that you would bless them and keep them, Lord God. And just bless us and just may we learn and be able to spread the light of you, Lord God, to help us set the captives free like you called us to. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory bless his name. Amen. Thank you, Sister Liz, for that prayer. Amen. We just thank God. It said, therefore, I exalt first all that supplication and prayers and intercession and giving thanks to be made for all men. Amen. Amen. So we are going to get started. We're going to talk about last week's lesson, which we talked about taking the high road to hell. And it's just like this topic is something that really, really was good to touch on, you know, because we as Christians, we want to make sure that we're representing God 100% across the border. Amen. Even when we're behind closed doors or when we're in our home, we want to still represent God. Amen. No matter what, you know, and that's, you know, you don't want your brothers or your sisters to fall because of you, of your negligence or your selfish reasons of doing things that just not a pleasing of God. And, you know, we, a lot of times, you know, tend to waver, you know, sometimes we compromise in different aspects. So we want to make sure that you are rooted and solid in God's word and standing and, and sold out, standing on his word and being that light in, in darkness, being that um, represent the king. Amen. So um, we don't want to be able to, you know, by, by our uh, uh, attitudes or shortcomings, allow our sister and brothers to fall because we're, you know, might be lukewarm or we may be, you know, struggling with some things as well. But we want to be able to be uh, open and transparent. And when we have, you know, some things going on, we need to take it across. First of all, we need to go with a surrendered, surrendering our heart and our mind and our body and soul to him, you know, just because, you know, a lot of times life itself can deal us a bad card and, and it can cause some people to fall off. But we pray that, that you will stay strong to the game, to the to the to, to to the to the goal keep the goal keep the vision that God has given you and, and stand on his word amen so we're going to talk about um last week's lesson was all uh, pertaining to again um uh, we're talking about taking the high road to hell and if uh Elias can share with us last week's lesson and the actual bonus notes that I gave them on last week if you don't uh, mind sharing that with us Liz I don't mind and the note you gave was from Matthew because why is it so easy to go to hell from Matthew 7.13, Matthew 7.13, and that we cannot keep straddling the fence and that we do have the great commission, that we can we have to choose what side we're on. And then you gave us the question, why is, it, why is the right way so narrow? The narrow road and the narrow way symbolize the challenges presented us by the way of the kingdom and that we have to suffer and self-deny. We have to take up our cross daily and follow him and that somebody has to represent Christ and that we cannot live a double life. We can't live a double life behind closed doors and public. We have to stay consistent in Christ. And number one was cowardly. And then Romans 1 16, Romans 1 16, we have to preach with boldness. And that a cowardly will just can't end up having because they're just cowards and they just can't. And that we cannot get caught up in tradition, like the religious spirits as well. And that God can use whatever He chooses, like a donkey, jawbone, whatever. God can choose whatever He wants to use. And that cowards will not make it into heaven. Lukewarm Christians, and then I was watching the notes of Revelation where it says the lukewarm Christians came to our mind. And that we cannot be saints on Sundays and ain't throughout the week. And that Jesus does love us. And that he suffered for us. And that he was called names. He was just pierced for our transgressions. That he went through what we're going through. So he knows we cannot be cowardly in anything that we do. We have to have that Holy Ghost boldness. And that it is cowardly to hide your fault. Second Timothy 1 and 7. Second Timothy 1 and 7. That God did give us a spirit of power and of love. Hebrews 11.1, 1, Hebrews 11.1, 1, we got to have that faith and courage. And I love Hebrews 11, where it's the faith chapter. And that people cannot function the spirit well and without, or without faith. And that then number two was the faithless person. A faithless person is always negative. We all know people that are negative, just toxic. 
in. Do you have faith in? I need, and I love how you said, if you have faith, you have to show the works. Because faith is an action work and that we all serve the same God and that faith about works is dead. And that God will do it again. That if God did it before, God will give it, do it again. And I, that's something that I always pray every day. Lord, give me more faith today. Lord, help me in my unbelief and circumstances. Number three, detestable. First Peter 4 and 3. First Peter 4 and, 4 and 3. That people love their idols. And that idols are anything that takes the place of God. And detestable means in a strong dislike. And Jeremiah 13 and 27 Jeremiah 13, 27, and now we have to quit living for the flesh. We have to crucify our flesh daily. And do you know any unclean people? Like a spiritual stink. Miracle, misery loves company. Hurt people, hurt people. But also heal people, heal people. And that we have to heal people because that's what we're supposed to do. And then number four was murderers. Revelation 21 and 8. Revelation 21 and 8. A one-time faith that they fall away. That we just can't have a one-time professed faith. It has to be daily. And that lack of commitment and that fear is an expression of unbelief, a distrust in God. And that we ha and that fear, we cannot have that in our life. And that just pray to God that he wouldn't take away that fear. And that hate and that hate men when you hate your fellow men, you commit murder. It's the same thing when you have hate in your heart. And that God loves you and wants you, wants us to be forgiven. That's a simple prayer. And that when we have, when we hold a hate in our heart, we're committing murder against that people. People think that murder is just like you killing a person, but you can also kill a person with your words. And how many times have you thought that and actually did that? And the next one was sexual immorality, perversion. Proverbs 6. 32 in Proverbs 6 and 32. A man who commits adultery has no sense. And that they're usually influenced by something heavy. Lust begins in the heart. And adultery and things like that, affairs, homosexuality, pornography, child molestation, incest, rape, and all the above fall into that category. We must live differently. When you talk about fall and how he went to go see the div Saul in general. And then number seven was idolater. Galatians 4 and 8. Galatians 4 and 8. And that we cannot bow down to idols. And anything can be an idol. Like family, friends, children, spouses, whatever can be an idol. Anything that keeps you away from God. And that we cannot bow down to them. It says in the Ten Commandments, do not bow down to idols. Or don't make anything graven in an image. And then liars was number eight. Colossians 3 and 9. Colossians 3 and 9. That we have to take off our old self. A divine revelation is from God. The truth will make you free. And that once we know the truth, it will set us free. And that it's a deceiver of self and others. And that we are being recorded. And we have to live like we're being recorded. And I think once people know they're being recorded, they'll live differently. Matthew 12, 36 to 37. Matthew 26 to 30, 36 to 37. And that we have to act and live like we are being recorded. Mark 10, 25. Mark 10, 25. And that Jesus paints us a picture of something, paints us a picture of something unreally, unreasonable by Wilson's, but is by God's end. That God, but all things are possible with God's grace that can overcome the impossible situation. We do all fall short, but we do ha we do live a redeemed life, and that we do have to put pride on the back shelf, and that we do have to have our hearts softened because tomorrow is not guaranteed. That we just tomorrow is not guaranteed. And humble yourself. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Second Chronicles. 714, that we have to stay in a low position and that we have to get into positions. Begin with confession, 1 John 1 and 9. 1 John 1 and 9. And that we have to condemning ourselves and be transparent. And those were the notes we went over last night. And then notes from the book were like the drugs and how they can 
take us away and that it, we can be easily influenced by the enemy through drugs. And pretty much that's what the chapter we talked about last week. And that's all I got. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask Fran, did, was she able to hear you clear? It was like, I don't know if your Bluetooth was a little bit off or something because it was like you, you, you wasn't, you didn't sound real clear like you normally do, uh, Liz. Uh, so I thought maybe it was on my part, but I turned it off. So, so I asked Fran, uh, were you able to hear a clear? Yeah, it was a little choppy. Okay, so I I, I, okay. I thought it was my part. She said it was a little choppy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna okay. kind of okay. piggyback off of what Liz said. Uh, for the ones that's getting uh, getting on on Facebook, we thank you for all uh, listening in, tuning in as well. Uh, we were talking about why uh, is it easy to go to hell? I mean, I I, I don't want to use that as a topic or saying that is you know. Uh, something that everybody choose to do, but um, it was definitely uh, something that you see that people tending to fall off. You know, you got people that's um, running away from the faith. I mean, running away from the faith, what I mean by that, they, they I, I heard a, a lady that I was talking to just recently, and she's like, you know, I, I just need deliverance. You know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, when it comes to my faith and church and all that is just right now i'm just a little bit over overdone overdone in a sense i think that was the word she used uh and i i just you know can't do it anymore and i told her don't give up you know just you know if you have like one bad experience um with with the job you don't expect the next job that you go to that's going to be worse than the one that you just left that you know you got it's you got to change your mindset you know and your attitude you know, and wishing that, that the best that's, you know, all things going to work out for the good of things, you know, instead of, you know, going in with a negative uh, attitude or with tunnel vision, you know, so um, number one was, uh, was talking about cowardly. So, you know, a cowardly, you know, it talked about in Romans 1 and 16, Romans 1 and 16, for I am ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and, and also to the Greek. Now, just think about when you first got saved, you know, you was on fire for the Lord, you was a renegade, I mean, you was like off the chain, you was like everywhere you go, you was telling how good God is, what God did for you, and how he brought you out of the darkness, and then 10 years down the line, you became complacent you came dry you got dead to the you know in, in a sense you know it's like you, you didn't don't have that fire anymore you know um so you, you know how i remember when we were we well i know with our church we could took a, a list of how many people you came throughout the day and minister uh to or led them to the cross you know uh so you know that was like my my front of my bible was like the first page was full because i was like that was the gift the office that i was walking in as as an evangelist you know so i was definitely you know uh excited in telling you know people how god is and what he done for me where he brought me out of using myself as a life uh application you know because people need to know you know how did you really you know how did you get through you know why do you you know why you didn't give up you know why uh, how was you able to forgive somebody that you know despitefully use you you know or, or betrayal you betrayed you or whatever the case may be you know and so when you have the holy spirit reside in you trust and believe me it's grace that helps you get through those those times to pray for those people that despitefully use you you know when you can pray for that that person that you know mistreated you or abused you or uh, or uh, molest you you know when you can pray for their soul and their salvation amen where you can have the heart of christ you know that resides in you amen um so we know that a coward who will not a coward will not make it to heaven. What that means is you you now you know when you got saved, it wasn't just for you to get uh to be saved and not share the goodness of the Lord. It wasn't just for you to be saved and be quiet, you know what I'm saying, and just <clears throat> be selfish in a sense. It was for you to share the goodness of the Lord and spread it wherever you go, where uh, throughout the the earth. So uh, when you when you allow this coward uh, 
to, you know, say, you know, and a coward is nothing but a person that's is, is got that fear or intimidated or feel like they're not, you know, capable and, and or shy or whatever the, you know, different uh, excuses sometimes we tend to make. But when we was not saved, and I know I'm for one, how, how wild and crazy and, you know, obnoxious I was and my mouth was like uh, uh, uh <clears throat> I was just telling somebody it was like a drunken seller you know uh, just cuss for no reason at all <clears throat> so just to say that you was loud then when you was you know a non-believer and so now when you became a, a Christian you became a little timid or you came you know gotten a little quiet you know but still I want to be that same I, but uh, different I want to be on fire for the Lord I want to be a renegade I want you know I want to be you know telling folks you know how you know just like I was then uh crazy for the for Satan I want to be crazy for the Lord if that makes any sense you know what I'm saying I want to be sold out for him amen and I'm not saying talking crazy mental wise. I'm talking about crazy about him. Like, you know how when you first met somebody and you know you was head goo eyes for him and you was crazy about him. You couldn't wait to talk to him. You couldn't wait to see that individual. You know what I'm talking about. That type of crazy. Same with that relationship that you have with your heavenly father. When you spend those times with him, reading the word, getting to know him, praying, fasting, getting in your worship music, you know, just getting all that you can to just, be in his presence you know what i'm saying um so we talk about that you know a coward you know it says it will not make it to heaven so knowing that you you got to know when you god saved you and brought you out of the darkness it wasn't just for you it was for you to spread the gospel it was for you to share with others people and help people be able to get through and and sh and you to share how did you made it through amen through god's grace amen we made it through and number two it was talking about faithless you know a lot of times we get we have that we, we pray about something and then we 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 act like we got the faith and everything and then what comes out of our mouth we kind of twist it and say you know what i doubt it i don't think he gonna ever change i think he gonna always be a a, a ho ho merry christmas he always gonna be on uh uh on drugs and alcohol he you know that you know those are the that's what you call faithless prayer if you pray about something and i always tell my my uh intercessor when you pray about something you give it to god full heartedly and you leave it there at his feet don't try to pick it back up because that's control when you try to pick it up and try to do it in your own strength you're gonna mess it up okay so you gotta remember you know that you gotta have um uh, Hebrew 11, one, you got to have faith and faith is what the faith is the substance of the things that what we hope for and the evidence of the things are not seen. So that's the spiritual realm. So then the spiritual realm, that's why we have to get in when we worship God, what we say, he says, we have to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So. So when you start speaking things out of your mouth, it's not like you lying and saying, you know what, I don't believe that this this situation that I that I'm in is going to turn around. I just think the worst scenario of it, it is it's always been like this, and I'm used to going through this every year after year after year. Well, when you speak that, guess what? Now the enemy has legal access to continue to do exactly what you say because you in agreement what the adversary is putting out there. If he's spitting that venom, if he's spitting deception across the border, guess what? He gonna keep you confused and deceived as well. So that's why we have to revamp what we say and we have to look at things with the spiritual realm of and, and speak those things as though it is, amen? So I speak to that mountain, let's just say it, I speak to that mountain and I cast that mountain back into, uh, <clears throat> into the sea or whatever, you know, you this is, you know, these are the things that you, you, you got to not look at things in the natural aspect. If you look in the natural, you're going to fail. If you hear things that's going on in the natural, you're going to fail. But if you tap into the spiritual realm, you'll be able to get that strength. You'll be able to get that faith that you really, really need to begin to speak life over your situation, over a dead situation, over your job loss, over your marriage that's, that's on the dead end. Okay? Number three, detestable, detestable, amen. Um, detestable means hateful, you know. 
Verse Peter uh, 4 and 3, 1 Peter 4 and 3 talks about you have had enough in the past and the evil thing that uh, the pagans people enjoy, their perversion and lust and, and their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties and, and their terrible worship of idols, okay, of detestable idols, okay? So that just letting you know that the, what we what we hear now in this in the scripture what it's speaking of we see that every day what's going on and you know people you know dibbing and dabbing and and and, and things that that's not pleasing of god like he was saying uh idols and and we you know and a lot of times like a cults pagans you know that's what it's speaking of you know dibbing and dabbing in new age things and and thinking you know uh as a christian it's okay you know because why because sally sue's doing it and and i, and I ain't never heard nothing bad about sally sue but you never heard of sally sue being tormented every night you know as she go to bed you don't know that uh james possibly dealing with some stuff too you know what i'm saying i'm just using this as an example you know and and they're not going to share that aspect of it you know because you got to think about the enemy he's going he he wheels you in and and you grab the bait and by grabbing the bait in the right bait that he has it's going to be lies across the across that bait for you to snatch it and it, it looks good okay it, it shines it, it looks you know like it's it's innocent it looks like it's it's okay to you know dib and dab in this new age stuff and everything um i think we were talking about that uh, uh with the marriage uh on last tuesday you know where we didn't understand that uh grandmama had went to the went to a witch doctor or went to madame mczell or whatever a psychic reader and everything because dad perhaps granddaddy has uh, uh stepped out of his marriage and sleeping with a younger woman and 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 and, and grandmama just got to the point she just got desperate and she just said you know i'm i hear you know i hear everybody my sister talking about this lady and i'm gonna go you know check her out and, and see what she's talking about how how i can get my marriage back and my husband back home you know and that sort of thing and then they end up doing that spell on and that's what you call open those doors right there. We were speaking earlier uh, on Tuesday, open those porters of it, demonic trafficking to come in. And so you don't want to do that. Never get before God. Don't get desperate to the point that you're trying to handle things in your own, own hands, take things and matters in your own hand, because that's going to cause chaos. That's going to cause more problems than what you, 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 you definitely don't, you wouldn't even imagine. Okay. Um, let me move on. Amen. Um, um, <clears throat> and then number four was murderers. Murderers. And we already know what uh, Cain did uh, at the beginning. He murdered his brother because of jealousy. jealousy. Uh, and so that Re Revelation 21 and 8 talk about um, but the cowardly and the unbelieving and the and the foul uh and the murderer and the and the perversion and those who practice magic art the idols of all liars and will be what assigned to the fairy, fairy like lake of burning brimstone this is the second death okay so that's what we talk know that you know murderer is just we was talking about that too. Murder don't have to be just a physical thing where you kill somebody, you know. Murder can be like what's in your mind about or towards an individual, like wishing something bad about them, you know, wishing something happened to that individual. That to me is witchcraft all day. I'm just gonna be, if I can be frank with you all, you know, when you think in those type of thoughts about somebody instead of being prayerful about them and, and praying in love, but you wishing something bad to happen to them that, and, and, and you praying that type of prayer, that's witchcraft. Be careful. Be careful because you need to check your heart. Literally check your heart. Why well, I hear people say, well, 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 Lord, don't let them arrest him to the point. Arrest him. Okay. I, I can go with that. Uh, to the point that he gets so sick and he he he, he almost died. No. No. Your prayer is God, let your will be done pertaining to my son's situation, my husband's situation, my daughter's situation, my co-worker uh, situation. You see what I'm saying? So be careful that your 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 prayer, don't twist your prayer with 
your heart being hardened and you, you it, it is you spitting that venom out you spitting poison out so be very very careful that that you don't murder an individual already in your heart or in your mind okay all right um and then like i said and the next thing is actual the actual uh um event and that's physical okay so number five we're talking about ladies and gentlemen we're talking about the high road to hell why why you know um people you know choose to to take the high road or take the 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 the, the wide road but anyway the next one number five was sexual and more uh perversion and it's proverbs uh six and 32 proverbs six verse 32 it says but a man who commits adultery has no sense who does so destroy himself so do you hear what that is when a man commit adultery woman and i'm not targeting my men women too has fell short and committed adultery in their marriage and 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 it, it it's to the point that when you do that you're not in your right state of mind you don't you're not even you're not even making wise decisions anymore because why because you didn't fail you didn't fail in a dark place and now the enemy got you bound okay got you hooked got you you know what i'm saying you got you it got you out there where the buses ain't running got, got you know what i'm saying and and, and that that individual that you sleeping with it, uh, that that individual assignment can be their assignment it can be like delay and jezebel the sign it was a De, yeah delay and jezebel their sign is to kill the destiny to kill god's divine destiny that's in you okay that anointing come on y'all so we we end up falling sometimes because what the enemy know exactly he paints that picture and he knows exactly what you need because what he's familiar with your sin so if you never dealt with your sin, say for instance, you had dealing with pornography, you masturbating, I'm just using an example, and then enemy seeing you this exactly what you're looking for, a pawn star, and you 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 and you feed into that. So boom, you end up falling. And so that's why you gotta be free, you gotta be healed from your childhood traumas, things that you have done in your past that now has caught up with you and you have not been open and honest and saying that this is what I'm dealing with. You know, I've been having these different dreams that I can't even, sex dreams, I don't even understand why I'm being harassed in my marriage, why I can't satisfy my husband or my wife sexual wise. So it's, these are things like, we, we, you know, that needs to be talked about, amen? Needs to put those things on the, on the on the table amen so so know that you know a uh, sexual perversion it you it, you're not going to make it to heaven okay with that you know what i'm saying until you get the proper help until you get free from that thing till you get totally totally delivered from that thing you know you can't be like one week you know i remember when one person said i ain't gonna never drink again i, I after this time i got so drunk to the point that I, I couldn't even figure out how i got home i'm done drinking and then next weekend come along you're doing it again and then you make up another excuse all this time i'm gonna go to church i'm gonna get my stuff together and everything don't you know each time <laughs> Don't y'all know each time you take a drink, every time you take a smoke, every time you lay down with a man that is not your husband, you do, you know, spirits are transferring. And you know the thing, the, the killing part of this, just because it's one little, one little spirit. See, the enemy don't come solo. He come gang banging. He bring the rest of his posse to reinforce that thing to keep you bound let me move on amen i'm hoping i'm helping somebody on tonight amen yes i hope i pray that you know somebody receive this and take a take a soul search of their life in, in their in inventory of their walk and and just be transparent you know this is what i'm dealing with apostle hey i'm I, ouch you 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 all in my video you all you all in my kool-aid all right um the next one is idol trees idols idols so Galatians 4 and 8 talk about that. Galatians 4 and 8 talk about that. Formerly, when you don't do or know God, you were you were a slave to those who uh by nature and not God's. Okay. So you know a lot of things can be idols in our life, your job, money, um, what's 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 something else? Oh, these video games, you know, um, 
How about lottery tickets? Okay. Anything that you like to do and it's you you over overwhelm with it or obsessed with it to the point that you you put God on the back burner. Okay. That's when you know that you have an idol in your in your in your life. Okay. When something is out is over rain, over over uh rating or over over outdoing God, you know, taking the place of God, then that's an idol, okay? <clears throat> Let me go and I'm almost finished. Last but not least, liars. Well, I just said a little lie that, you know, I didn't really mean it. I was just joking. I was just playing. Um, I wasn't serious, you know, when I said that lie. Do you think the devil care about that? Do he really? A father lied. He up there with the judge, going before the judge and said, see, they lied about they they wasn't married. They lied and said that they uh they don't have no kids. They lied that they said that they uh single. You know, and, and I'm just using as an example those those lies. Believe it or not, is what the enemy says. I got access to continue allowing her to be a habitual lie, allowing her to be a manipulator, allowing them to you know continue being um what's another word deceived. Amen. Okay, so a liar in Colossians 3 and 9 talks about this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 said, Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with this practice. So listen, if your old you, just think about it, was always lying, always trying to impress people, always trying to flow show, always trying to, you know, uh, volunteer tell a lie. Oh my God, just volunteer tell. Like I did not ex sign up I was expecting you to, you know, share that. You know, I'm just using an example. But yes, ask God, am I, you know, help me not to be a liar because this is some the old me. This was the, the when back in the day when I wasn't saved. Okay, okay. So God, help me. Excuse me. Help me not to be that liar that I was when I was when I was not saved. Okay. All right. So know that a liar is not going to make it into heaven. Y'all already know that though. So I'm just showing you, share with you. You know, check yourself. Just check yourself. Okay. Amen. So um, that's it. So if you in, in any of those eight things categories that I just spoke on and you fall under them, now is the time to repent of that thing. Recognize it, first of all, because a lot of times we don't recognize what's in us because we, we, we are in denial for one. Second of all, we can't see it, but everybody else perhaps can see it. If somebody else can see that pride or that lie, that, that, that manipulating uh, uh, or that uh, lying spirit, I'm just using an example. And then you say, I, they just didn't like me anyway. Uh, I, they just jealous of me, you know, making excuses. No, take an inventory of your life and say, God, if this is me, Lord, if I have any problems uh, on this eight, this eight list that the apostle just mentioned, if I have any of those things on my list, bring it to my forefront of my memory. Show me if this me or not, God. And all I say, be ready to handle the truth because God won't allow you to be blindsided no more. He won't allow you to be ignorant of the enemy's device, okay? So now you're you're more acknowledging of this thing and you recognize it and now you can repent of it. You humble yourself first of all, just humble yourself. And then second of all, confess, amen? Confess your faults to one another. If you got somebody that you can confine in and don't have to worry about them judging you or putting your business out there on social media, get that type of friend that you guys can just be transparent and just be open with one another girl this is how i am girl right now i feel like setting it out i friend no friend no if i if i get out of carrots and everything i'll be so transparent i'll be like look girl i don't even and lord no he 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 got to take the cold call okay because i'm about to set it off amen no no i'm not um yeah yeah apostle don't be setting it off i'm delivered from setting it off amen to god be the glory for real y'all I, I the old frankie is dead Tr truly dead what are you talking about your nathan well as she done wore this out i've been talking about yes lord allow there be those nathans oh in our lives yes everybody need a nathan assigned to them thanks friend a nathan assigned to them and that nathan gonna always tell you you know what 
you know you was wrong for looking out that window at Bathsheba while she was naked and taking a bath. Now, you you know you didn't have no business on that balcony. And then had the audacity to call her, tell your servants to go over there and call her over to your palace. And you had hidden modems. You had already lust at her by looking at her. Ooh, she got a nice body. Yes, call on over here so she can make me some hot tea. Um, okay, y'all, let me come back. So yeah, everybody need a Nathan, okay, in their life. Ask God, put a Nathan in your life, amen? Somebody that's going to love you and correct you in love, amen? You need those type of people that's going to be, you know, real with you and not let you be in, walk in error, you know? When you over here cussing and acting like Peter and acting a fool and, and, and fighting and all over the place. No, you need somebody going to say, hey, take it down, take it down, calm down, come on now. Let's, let's, let's fast. Let's, maybe we need to fast because you, you didn't get out of character. I don't, I don't know. We, we need some help in this area. Both of you are my, oh, praise God. Let's see both of y'all are our Nathan. Amen. So. So God be the glory. So we're going to go ahead. That was it. So I was just uh, piggybacking off of my girl, uh, Liz, when she was talking about um, why is it easy to go to hell? Okay. So now we're going to move on to the video that we actually had for homework. If you guys got the video, it's called The Gospel According to uh, Satan. And David uh, Wilkinson was the pastor. Uh, David was the one that uh, talked on this. And it was really, really good information, I'm guys. And I'm telling y'all, still on Similac Milk, this might not be the right class for you. I'm just, I'm just saying, because we, we, we eating real meat here. We eating the real deal, okay? Hey, Amen. This real McCoy, uh, the way we, 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 we broadcast it, we going to bring it real. Hey, Amen. We're going we're gonna to put that... Um, that buffet platter, uh, uh, buffet in front of you, and you're going to eat good. Amen? Amen. All right, uh, Lizzie, uh, if you can go ahead and tell me what the video you gather. Go ahead. Gather your... Okay. Um, David Wilkinson, Wilkerson never disappoints in his videos. He's always cut, dry to the point, and everything like that in between. And the gospel accommodation, because it's adapting, adjusting to the gospel to appease and to attract sinners. It's not confronting that they just people just want to come to church and just have their ears tickled. And that spoon fed gospel that people just want to hear what they want to hear. And that he talked about like the mega church formula, like making things comfortable, sinner friendly, which like really stuck out to me. And that Paul warned us as in, that we cannot preach another gospel and that we cannot do that. And that we are called that called you unto the grace of Christ and be transformed. And that we cannot accommodate the needs of sinners and that we have to confront it. And he's given a word anti nominism, anti law movement, and that the straight and narrow, and that how Satan will send wolves among sheep's clothing, and that he will put wolves in sheep's clothing right in front of us, and that to subdue an ungodly ambition, that we have to have our discernment sharpened on the daily. And 2 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 11. Acts in 13, Acts 13. Minister to the Lord, fasted, planning session, waiting on the Lord for direction. And that's something we have to do too. And that they played, they prayed, not played. They prayed, no strategizing, no networking. No one made a step until the Holy Ghost said so. And that we had the laying on the hands and that Paul lived his whole life in religious formalities and a man-made and man-made scheme. And that how we can, how... These mega churches are just tickling the elbows of people on how they're just gave these big churches, how they just have no accountability, no nothing in that, that the power and that they're lacking the power and the power and the demonstrates of the Holy Ghost. Like we lack that in churches that they just took, like I said, tickle the fun and go, <clears throat> and that we have to preach unashamed and that we have to be set free from that lifestyle and that people are a lover for pleasure. And love or pleasure more than a love of God. We just want to be pleasured, counterfeit, and that they're counterfeit regarding the faith, and that they accommodate the modern man and a version of self denial. They accommodate man's offense of the cross, and God demands more of us, and that we have to have a newness and a newness of life, and that our bodies as living and holy sacrifices, and how He wants that people are just tickling, and that ministers just do kind of make people happy and that's pretty much what i got in a nutshell 
That's good, Liz. That was good. Amen. Amen. Okay. Wow. Well, that's going to go right into the lesson. Um, of course, y'all already know what time in is no times. And y'all got to excuse Fran already. She's been excused. She's actually at work. She's working late tonight. But she's in. Uh, she got, got her earplugs in. And she actually communicating with um through the through the chat so that's a blessing to still have her on board with us um so we're going to talk about uh get your pen and paper oh you ready sweet oh um oh you're ready to take notes okay liz okay thank you liz so liz gonna go ahead she's volunteering to take the notes for me tonight thank you thank you precious see liz know her lane she know you know she don't she don't try to run from it. She just let I'm available to my God. I'm doing this for the for the glory of His. Come on, you doing it for the glory of Him, Amen. Not for Apostle McCoy because no, 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 no. Don't get it twisted, Amen. It's to help you. No Jonas. Who no Jonas? Who no Jonas? I'm ready. No, Jonah. Oh, running. Okay, I get what she's saying. No, Jonas. I'm like, who is Jonah? But I know what she's talking about. Running. Yeah, run. Jonah did. He ran in a whole different direction and he got a whooping. Yes, he did. <laughs> he got thrown off the boat. <laughs> yeah, got thrown off the boat and swallowed up by a fish. Okay. All right. Um, uh, so we're going to talk about tonight the gospel according to Satan, and I'm just piggybacking off a little bit of what David, uh, Pastor David was talking about, but I'm just going to see if I can paint a little broader broader picture for you all as well. Um, so I'm going to use Matthew 13, verse 24 through 30. Matthew 13, verse 24 through 30. It said, another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sow so good seeds in his field. But while sleep, by while men slept, I'm sorry, his men came and, and sword, sword uh, terrors among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and sprouted, sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came to say to him, sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tarries? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to get to go and gather them up? But he said, no less. While you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest at the time of harvest. And I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and, and bind them in the bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Wow. Wow. Again, this, this gospel is deep. <laughs> oh, God. He's, it's how he was, sh how we should uh, conduct ourselves towards these idols uh, or, or even false teachers. We are uprooted, not destroy them. We are to uproot nor destroy them. He, here he says publicly, let both grow together. We have to do here with God's word alone for the matter he he, he who makes a mistake today may find the truth tomorrow. See, who knows when the word of God may touch his heart, but if he is burned at, as a state or otherwise destroyed, it is thereby assured that he can never find the truth and the word of God is snatched away from him and he must be lost or who otherwise might have been saved. See, hence the, the Lord says that here that the wheat also will be uprooted if we wheat out the tares. See, that is something awful in the eyes of God and never to be justified. So I understand the concept of what he was saying. 
You know, I hear people all the time, you know, we, we come to Safe Haven and we come, everybody comes from different walks of life, different churches and everything. And you might have one person in the pack, it don't fail, that is going to be disrupted, distracting everybody. I mean, just when I mean distracting, be like, all eyes is on this individual. They want to be talk. They talkative. They want to be heard. They want to be seen. You going you you gonna always have one out of the bunch. You know what I'm saying? That 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 just don't you that ain't gonna be able to flow together. They y'all not gonna be able to connect automatically. But even that, we gotta allow something like uh, my girl said. You gotta allow your L your elbow to rub off on them. Your, your, your anointing rub off on them. Your light should automatic shine. Amen? Amen. So you got to be the example. You got to be the true light and, and, of what God said, we, who we supposed to be. Okay? So that's, that's good. All right. Um, but then it talks about Satan is the art or con, con, uh, counterfeit. Yes, he is. We always say he always carbon copy, duplicating, always trying to steal God's idea. He always trying to be better than God and, and, and just just raggly. He just raggly with it, you know, when he's doing things. So the devil is now busy at work in the same field in which the Lord sowed the good seed. OK, he's seeking to prevent the growth of the wheat by another plant and the tares which closely represents the wheat in appearance. So in the word, in a word by a process of limit, uh, imitation, I'm sorry, he is aiming to neutralize the work of Christ. Mm, sound like a hater to me. Come on, he always trying to, always trying to kill what God is doing. He always trying to destroy what God is doing, okay? Or mimicking. Therefore, as Christ, has the gospel guess what this guess what, what this satan also hate to say it has a gospel too god got angels guess what the devil got angels you see so you you see what i'm saying he always trying to duplicate what god is doing okay uh and i we can we can actually go down a list well, God created marriage between a uh, woman and man. Okay, here goes Satan. Well, I'm going to create same-sex marriage. Er, er, I'm like Scooby-Doo. Er, okay, so one can produce and the other one can't produce. Okay, you got non-production over here. Non-production and you have producing, multiplying, fruitful. Come on. All right, so do the earth on this. I'm just saying husband, wife, man and wife, okay? Amen. Um, a power authority. Oh, I'm like, I could go on and on and on. I'm trying to be nice, guys. <laughs> Amen. All right, so um, so therefore, therefore, as Christ has, like I said, the gospel, and also Satan has a gospel too. So the latter being a uh, bright counterfeit of the former. So closely does the gospel of Satan represent that which is mock which is a mockery, multitudes of the unsaved or deceived by it. Okay. Not, now the next one is the existence of Satan's gospel. The existence of Satan uh, Satan's gospel. It is to the gospel of Satan that the apostle refers. Put your thing on mute sis for me real quick where is that that's that's little leash oh she got it um um where was i oh because the existence of satan's gospel that's where we at uh uh liz okay all right yeah you got it down okay thank you but it's so it it is to the gospel of satan that the apostle refers when uh re refers when he says to the galatians uh chapter one verse six through seven galatians chapter one verse six through seven it said i am amazed that you are so quickly and deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of christ and are turning to a different gospel mm, which is really no gospel at all Eventually, some people are throwing you into a confusion or are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ, okay? 
See, the false gospel, okay, was being announced even in the days of the apostle. And the most foul curse was called, called down upon those who preached it. And the apostle continues, but through though we uh, are the angel from heaven, preach and other gospel unto you that, I mean, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be hateful. By the help of God, we shall not attempt to discuss or rather expose the false gospel. Okay, this is we talking about the existence of Satan's gospel. This is how he's perpetrating and he's doing all when you got all these religions um that's out there and you know and everybody's saying it's like it's a competition well you know this we gonna make it to heaven only only i, I don't know what's I don't want to throw nobody under the bus, but you know, only this many people are gonna make it to heaven. You know, uh, this 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 religion. If you choose this religion, you 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 going to heaven. You know, do you choose this religion? You know, it's the right religion. You know, I'm just using this as an example, guys. So y'all know all those type of religions out there, and, and it's like you go to the grocery store. Of course, you know you might. Um, want to get the generic brand, okay? Because it's more inexpensive. But here you, here it is. You want to get you. We we talking about the 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 expensive brand. I mean the 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 real brand is expensive. So that's gonna cost a little bit. So look, you got. Uh, so I I don't know. I just probably. I don't, I want the real deal. I don't want the imitation, artificial, nothing uh, watered down. Like we were talking about watered down sermon teachings. Now I want the real deal. Amen. Amen. Um, next one. Characteristics of Satan's gospel. Luke 12, verse 52 through 54. Luke 12 through 52, 54. Thank you, Danielle. God bless you. It says, from now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, and mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, and mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and on and on, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Y'all already know. That that right there sound like a family feud, okay? Wonder why I was uh, no, no, forgive me, cause I got some Mexican friends. I was just wondering why how the Mexicans they they be ten deep in one house, one apartment, and can get along. But yeah, it's a whole different story with us. We you'll see us on the news. Yeah, yes, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, um. So th that just lets you know the characteristics of Satan's gospel, what his intent is to cause that division, to cause all type of um, uh, just competition, just all type of chaos. You know, that's what his thing is. You know, one of folks uh, wonderful, wonder why so many folks is confused because they're not stable, they're not rooted in the word of God, and they ain't standing on solid doc on the solid documents. They like, oh well, let me go ahead and read this book over here that's talking about the Mormons. This one over here talking about the Islam. Let me go ahead and read this so I can understand, you know, where they coming from, you know, in case I have to run into one of them and, and gotta talk their language and but see. I'm just me person. I, a lot of that stuff you can end up getting in your spirit, and then you be like, you be questioning the true gospel. You be you be undeciding right now. You be like, you've been in, end up walking away. Okay, I'm just using it. I'm just using it as an example, guys. Stay, 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 stay with me, guys. Just stay, 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 stay with me. That's all. So the gospel of Satan is not a system of revolution or principle, nor yet a, a program of rebellion, but it does not promote it does not promote strive and war, but it aims at peace and unity. It seeks not to set the mother against the daughter, nor the father against the son, but destroys the what the same sex or more similar that the that the other siblings or that other siblings. See, spirits whereby the human race is regarded as one great brotherhood 
It does not seem to drag down the natural man, but it to improve and uplift him. So it, it, it advocates education or cultivations and, and appeals to the best that it it, it within us. See, that's just like women now, you know, same sex relationships and 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 one of the one of the people may go outside the and and have a baby so now they have this baby and they bring this baby into the relationship now this this child is confused because they're tell they're to, they telling the child you got you got two mamas but you got one daddy got two mamas but come on now that's confusing the child you know and so this is what I'm this is what I'm saying how the enemy does he will you know he 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 breathes on confusion that's breathing ground you know what I'm saying he loved to cause that confusion amongst the people okay it don't sound right but guess what folks gonna gravitate to the lie quicker than the truth why because the truth will make you free and folk, a lot of folks ain't trying to be, they no, no, no. They ain't trying to live right. They, they trying to do them. A lot of, a lot of us can get selfish and doing us. And look, I'm, I'm, I'm finna turn 40. I'm about to turn it up. I'm doing me. I don't care what nobody say. This is my time to shine. It's my time to do me. I gotta do, I got to do me. <laughs> Girlfriend, let me say this. You you be out, listen, Jesus been the came back and you out there twerking and turning it up and all in the club and all in there sleeping with Sally Sue and 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 uh, just swinging. Y'all know what I'm talking about. No, to the no. That know that when that COVID hit and everything, everybody got a rule awakening. Everybody got scared. Everybody started going to church. Everybody tried to find a prayer line and get on. Now everything seemed like the start smoothing out and everything folks now what they're going back to the doll vomit mm, they're going back to that yeah they know them all right let me let me go ahead let me move on um so it like i said it aims to make this world such a comfortable and like-minded uh, uh, dom uh dominate that crisis absence from it and will not be felt and god will not be needed in it this is what the enemy is is trying to do okay it, it endeavors to uh, occupy man so much that this world that he has no time uh desire to think of the world to come it's communication uh spreads okay the principles of self sacrifice charities and kindness and teaches us to live for good of others and to be kind to all it appeals strongly to the corner mind as a prop, uh, popular with the masses, because it ignore, uh, ignores the, uh, the facts that by the natural man, it is fa failing creation. And that means it's separated from the life of God and dead in transpassion, trans, transpasses and sins and that it's, its own hope lies in being born again. So do you see, when we type of world that we living in okay where the carnal mind is like i said is gonna overlook what is right and gravitate to the lies mm, yeah okay all right let me move on i'm at 706 i got i'm gotta gotta rush i'm sorry y'all so satan's gospel seeks reform rather than repentance Satan's gospel seeks reform rather than repentance. Ephesians 2 and 9. And, and when I when I seen reform, the first thing that came to my mind was prisons. You know, the, the, the prisons programs is supposed to be lined up to reform the prisons and, and, and allow them to go back out in society, but really it's not. It's the opposite. A lot of them get in there the prisons get in there and their mindset is like i'm trying to figure a, be a better plan on how to rob i know if i did it this way i messed up so i got a better plan you know that's that's not reforming no okay anyway let me go ahead ephesians 2 and 9 ephesians 2 and 9 
Salvation is not a reward for good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. So the gospel to the gospel of Christ, okay, we got to know that the, the gospel of Satan also, well, the gospel of Satan teaches salvation by work, okay? It implants fixed justification before God before God on the ground of human goodness, okay? And, 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 and you already hear it said, be good and do good, but it fails to recognize that the flesh there dwells uh, no uh, good thing. That, and as an example, the first thing came to my mind, example, I mean, first thing came to my mind was secret society organizations. Yes, I'm going to talk about my Freemason, Eastern stars, fraternities and sororities. Yes, I'm the, that's secret societies. That see right there, they do they do a lot of charity. They do a lot of th good things, okay? But do you really think those good things, good works in the community and all that is going to get you to heaven? Think about it. But see, that's the trick of the enemy. Thinking you you do you know you're getting people now e even in the church, they signing up for this. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna play for Eastern Star. I'm gonna play for the Freemasons because they help they help they brotherhood they sisterhood they they stick together. Come on, but they, also they stick together. What going going to worship false gods? Okay you plaguing and, and an oath to false gods. Oh, that's a whole different story, y'all. Y'all better wake up and smell the coffee. That's all I got to say. Do your history, do your homework on that. Who, who's the founders of those sororities, fraternities? Come on, atheists, they atheists. Yes, they are, yes, they are. Oh, let me go, let me move on. I'm trying to be nice. Hallelujah. Okay. So, and, and, and you don't even want to think about half of them, what they're doing. Uh, some of them drug dealers, some own drugs, some of them a uh, bunch of, you know, jump in and out of bed like a motorcycle gang. Oh, did I say motorcycle gang? Yeah, they sleep. They, they real. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, All right, so the next one is Satan's gospel and has apostles. Satan's gospel has apostles. I just told y'all early, the enemy ain't nothing, but a, ain't nothing but a carbon copy of what God done. He a hater. He always duplicating, trying to do better. I'll do God. You already know. Well, Romans 10 and 3 talks about it. Romans 10 and 3 talks about it for the being ignorant of God's righteous and God, I mean, going about to establish their own righteous have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. We already know that the apostles of Satan's are not salon, salon keepers, well, yes, they are, or white slave trafficking, trafficking, yes, they are, but are they, but, but this is what they, 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 we was talking about David, Pastor David said, but guess what? But or for the most part, they are ordained ministers. I said, ouch, did he really throw us under the bus like that? Yeah, he said thousands of those who occupy the model, models, the, the pulpit or are no longer engaging in presenting the fundamentals of the Christian faith, but have turned aside from the truth and have given heed unto to lies, fables. Okay, so uh, go ahead at Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse thirteen and fifteen. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, thirteen, fifteen. I knew it was a lot of ministers out there that was on oh my God was on the platforms and they were doing good. When I mean platforms, you seen them on all type of TV broadcasts and radio broadcast you just seen them all over the place and i mean they was prophesying doing good you know and, 
and and hopefully signs and wonders was following them, of course. And and then all of a sudden it, they start dying down. It started di when I mean dying down, it seemed like they start watering things down and start turning to their own elective ideas on how to do things. And that, ooh, yeah, that's scary right there. It's like, okay, God, all right, I got this now. I, I'm pretty much, uh, I can handle this. I, I got, I can do this with my eyes closed. You know, I can prophesize my eyes closed, you know. Oh, I see somebody with a number, uh, 33245 uh, uh, address at Sally Seuss uh, Lane. You know, let me say the devil, divination, he, guess what? He, 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 he getting information just as well. Oh, did I say that? Okay. Anyway, let me go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to 15, y'all. I don't know. For the, 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 tonight, I feel like, ooh, ouch, like taking a sludge hammer and just step on some toes. A slug, I mean, just break up some follow ground here. Okay, so for it says, such are false apostles, deceitful workers, and transforming themselves, imitating into what? The apostle of Christ. Okay, so we know that that, that that what Satan has has tried to do is try to transform himself into what? An angel of light. So therefore, it's no greater, th greater thing not to be wary at and, and the ministers that also has transformed as ministers of righteousness, whom ended the ends shall be according to the to the works. Whose end, whose end, I'm sorry, shall be according to their works okay to their works that's what i'm saying they own ideas their way of doing things you know i feel like when they start doing things their own way and take god out of the equation now they guess who's speaking to them who's influencing them ah uh, you guessed it satan's gospel and <laughs> Okay, let me go back. So I said it's Satan. So that's what we're talking about. Satan's gospel imitates the gospel of Christ. Okay. And I and I'm not gonna go all into details because I'm already running a little bit over time. But Satan's gospel imitates the gospel of Christ. Proverbs 14 and 12. Proverbs 14, verse 12. It said, There is a way which seems right unto man, but the end, therefore, the ways of death. Okay. We already know, we just talked about what Satan always does. He always duplicating, imitating, always trying to do what God is doing, trying to outdo him. I remember I got a phone call one time and a young lady from uh, from out of state uh, somehow was following me on social media and thought that I would be a good person to be on this platform with other leaders, but find out those other leaders were not just, um, um, there were different religions. Let me say that it was different religions. We were talking Islam, uh, Jehovah Witness. It was just all, when I looked at the symbols around that earth, around the world, that, that it was like the logo. And I said, Lord, now what this this organization was all about peace. Come on, we know that's an imitation of peace. You gonna bring all these leaders together, and y'all talking on peace. Y'all talking about on talking about your belief. That's gonna be messy. That's gonna be well. Anyway, they couldn't recruit me. Thank God, I'm strong. And I'm, when I say I'm strong, I'm strong in God's word, and I can't be moved. Oh no, no, no. Well, end up in that meeting. She thought she was recruiting me. I end up taking her to the cross amen i i said if hey you've been in this this organization for how many years 13 years how so say for instance do, do or, or you say when she said i think so that is you 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 better know that you know that you save holy ghost feel come on y'all stop playing so Anyway, I end up ministering to her and uh, the sinner's prayer with her, and she accepted Christ. I'm praying that she let this organization go because it it, it was nothing nothing to play with. It was nothing but darkness. That's all I was saying: dark, dark, darkness. With these this thing they call peace. Okay, um, it's to me it was like 
new order. That's what it was called to me. It was like a, what they call it now. They they trying to do yes that new order thing. Mm, don't get caught up. All right, let, let me move on. Satan's gospel blinds men to the truth. Satan gospel blinds men to the truth. And and, and put down Second Cor uh, Corinthians chapter four, verse three through four. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse three through four. Thank you, sweetie. It says that um, which which sh sheds much light upon our present thing. That uh, what, where am I at? Oh, okay. Saying so in, in whom the God of this of this world, which is it's talking about Satan, have bind the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious God, of gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. He blinds the man's the minds, guys, of unbelievers through hiding the light of the gospel of Christ, and he does this, y'all. He does this. He tries to do it well. Okay, but that's why we got to know the word for ourselves. You got to study to show yourself approved. Amen. You can't let nobody just tell you anything. First of all, you got to do your homework. You got to do your research. You got to make sure that the scripture is the, in the book, in the Bible. Okay, not in no other type of Bibles. You know, you got these uh, uh, hotels now. They got choices in the drawer. You got a Mormon uh, Bible and uh, a real Bible. Got a fake Bible, real Bible. <laughs> who what you know, who gonna choose? They are gonna choose the false Bible. Folks gonna, yep, they gonna choose the false Bible. Cause it's already the lies that were saying there's some Bible man made, it's written by the white man, you know? The, look, guess what? Your manual and your car is written by somebody too, right? But you trust and believe that everything is something go wrong with your car and you look it up on in that manual in that glove box, you gonna check it out and you gonna get it fixed. Well, anyway, that's a whole different story. <laughs> I don't know where I went with that, y'all. Help me, help me, Lord. Let me get back on track. Mm. All right, so, um, all right, so we was talking about Satan's gospel blinds men to the truth. Okay, so that's it. So, oh, another one, and the uh, next, the next one, I'm the last two, and I'm almost done. The true gospel is knowing Christ, guys, and not knowing about Him. Did you hear me? The true gospel is knowing Christ and not just knowing about Him. Come on, really, really got to know him, not just going to Sunday school, you know, like it's tradition, like, you know, I got to go to Sunday school, you know, I got to go to Bible study on Wednesday, you know, we got to go, you know, choir rehearsal, you know, I, do you, do you really, 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 really know Christ? That's the thing. All right. Next one, the true gospel is cause men to examine their life. The true Gospel calls men to examine their life. Ooh, sound like some toes stomping there again. Stepping on some toes, stepping on some toes. Okay, all right. And I'm gonna use this Luke uh, 19 and 14, and I'm almost done. Luke 19 and 14. Luke 19, thank you, uh, Liz. It said, but this subject hated him and sent a delegation uh, after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. Mm, are you relying wholly on his righteousness and the blood for your exception with, with God? See, those who are trusting to an outward form of godliness, such as baptism and etc., cetera, you, you, you got to know God for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to know that you know that you know him and experience him. What has he done for you lately? That's a, that, that should start, let's start with that. He done brought you out of some situations. I'm telling you, it wasn't nothing but God, okay? All right. All right, so that's it. That wraps it up there. Just to say, again, we got, we talked about the gospel of Satan. And that's what the topic on, tonight was the gospel according to satan not trying to uh give satan no uh platform or build him up or 
No, uh -uh. I'm just want you guys to study your component, study your opponent, I'm sorry, and know how he operates, okay? So you won't be ignorant when he come and hit you oops upside your head with some nons nonsense, you know, because he will come with some stuff that just don't even make sense, and but it make you scratch your head and like, well, maybe, you know, I, I, I might need to go ahead and go, you know, turn to this, this idol or turn to this uh strange fire okay y'all let me go let me go all right I, i'm being i'm being nice because i'm trying to look at the time so we're gonna go ahead and start the book real quick and we on page 105 and and, and chapter nine page 105 i'm telling you guys y'all want to go ahead and get this book it's never too late it's called devils demons and deliverance by merlin hickey it is a good book a good good book good meat if you guys ready for uh real meat you know if y'all just like you know, sipping through a straw, you know, and drinking your milk and eating some Oreo cookies, then this probably wouldn't be a good book for you. Yeah, you probably, you probably spit it out. All right, all right. So who we have tonight? We got my girl Liz and left me. It looks like oh, wait a minute. I'm home. still here. Oh, Liz still with me. Okay, amen. All right. So can you start, uh, Liz, on page one hundred and five, please, of the book? Yeah, I can do that. Chapter nine. All right, guys. Still according to Satan. God created people with a natural desire to know him and fellowship with him. Our spirits were created to communicate with his Holy Spirit. However, when mankind fell into sin, the lust of the flesh and the soul built a wall between our spirits and his. Our connection to, the God, connection to God was severed. That wall can only be destroyed by Christ Jesus, whose blood cleanses us from and restores us to a holy communion with our Father. Our natural desire to fellowship with God is fulfilled only when we accept Christ as our Savior. When people don't know Christ or reject him, their innate desire to know God becomes misdirected. Their search for a spiritual connection leads them down a dark path that Satan constructed to lead people astray. Sometimes those paths lead to Satanism, but most of often they direct people to false religions or cults. Satan laid the foundation for all types of false religions and cults from before the flood. See Genesis 6. He has given these religions to supreme beings, doctrines, and steps to get to heaven. People yearning for spiritual fulfillment flock to these religions, desperately hoping for their actions or lifestyles will set their spirits free. They don't realize they are devoting themselves to a lie and have put their spirits in eternal bondage. False religions are spreading like wildfire in our nation, especially in the form of New Age movement. People are getting into the far eastern cults, such as Buddhism and Hinduism, and through their misguided actions, they are inviting evil spirits into our country. The devil has this depleted army of seducing spirits to allure people away from Christianity. The spirit ex expressly says that in latter times will some depart from the faith, giving heed to deceived spirits and doctrine of demons. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. These lying spirits tell you that you are too sad for Christianity. There has to be more to salvation than just saying a prayer. That you are more spiritual than the churches in town, etc. But as long as you stay in the world of God, a seducing spirit has a hard time getting you to getting to you because you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John 8, 32. As long as you are praying for the guidance of the Holy Spirit, he will lead you into all truth. Skepticism atheism, and existentialism. Skeptics are increasing percent of the population in the United States. Some are atheists, some are agnostic. For a skeptic, reality is tested through rational evidence. If there isn't enough rational supporting evidence, the skeptic will not believe the matter, of, matter in question. Classical philosophical skepticism was a school of thought that asserted nothing. Naturalism points to the law of nature and denies any supernatural existence. It's a springboard for atheism and some forth of skepticism, nihilism and existalism. In our pluralistic society, the worldviews we encounter are often complex, but the more we dialogue, the more we can eliminate assumptions about someone who has a different view, worldview. Existentialism can be quite complex worldview because of the wide range of expressions, and it has a difficult to define. 
The main ideas behind this system of beliefs are our own choices and our guiding force in our lives, and the individual determines what to, what to believe about reality. There is an acknowledgement that science and knowledge are limited, and the experience was what shapes life. Through and purpose in life cannot be known in an unfathomable universe, and that, and that is misery is an extent, extentless is confronted with. For a Christian, absolute truths are essential in embracing God's word. For an extendless list, truth is derived, derived from the individual and his experience of reality. It's common to hear, well, I believe I'm a good person. Therefore, I don't believe I'm going to hell. For the Christian, we know that sin is what separates us from God. And Jesus is the answer to sin issue. Sin is so profound that God has sent his son to atone for our sins so we can be saved from death. Sadly, the whole topic of sin today is unpopular, and we don't want to see the reality of our condition. For an extant a list, it is difficult to find purpose in life. In the light of the non-Christian expression of externalism, God can be the source of a person's calling. All of humanity is searching for a purpose, for ways to serve one another. Christians seek ways to serve God and humanity. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do works which God prepared in advance for us to do. The more we live for ourselves, the more miserable we become. No matter if we are an Emin, a lawyer, a counselor, a teacher, I believe most of us want to contribute and add value to society. We do have a common ground where we can be humanitarians together. I think when we begin to ask the hard questions of life, we are confronted with even deeper questions. What I would die for, <clears throat> what I would die for, what what I live for. For me, God continues to give me a passion to share my faith with the nations in a world where rumors of war and civil wars break out daily. I believe in eternal life, and I want those with opposing worldview to know about it. I want to drag them out of Satan's grip. I want Muslims, Jews, atheists, and agnostics to least least hear that God's grace is for everyone who believes in Him. Modernism and humanism. Modernists believe doctrines and belief must be, cha must be changed to keep up with the times. <clears throat> they believe in applying scientific knowledge to, to religion. They have a responsibility to constantly improve the world we live in. Basically, they believe that mankind is good and needs the right education to get better, and in fact, is improving. Humanism exalts man. Man alone is in control. There is no need for revelation. Man can develop his own morality through reforming character. They do not acknowledge sin, is sin in man, nor recognize the scriptures as special revelation. A number of groups fall into this category, including Unitarians, Universalists, Liberals, and Neo-Orthodoxy. Unitarians and Universalists. The main point is the oneness of God. He is the only one. It is irrational to think of him as three persons. Therefore, the Trinity is rejected. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is God nor that his death was for the forgiveness of sins. They do not teach in the virgin birth, the, bold, the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, or his second coming. Although Unitarians quote the Bible, to them it's not the final authority, the inspired word of God. Universalists believe that at the end, salvation will be for all and redemption will be universal. Liberals. Liberals claim to be good Christians, but deny the supernatural. The universe is operated by natural and scientific laws, not a supernatural spiritual one. Because of this basic belief, much of the Bible has to be interpreted to explain the miraculous. Liberals downplay the sinfulness of man. Liberal thinking is spread throughout many churches and not defined as cult. We especially see an acceptance of gay clergy and abortion in these churches. Neo-Orthodoxy. Neo Toward the end of World War I, Karl Barth, a German liberal pastor, published a commentary on the Book of Mormons and admitted to the sinfulness of man. It was a reaction against the failed ideas of liberal Protestantism, the teaching on it, and began movement toward the more orthodox Christian view. However, this group still does not claim the Bible as the final authority and still holds their natural view of it. Therefore, it is very difficult to reconcile the beliefs of this movement with, the, with those of the Bible. Bible. Pause. Pause. Liz. Thank you. Wow. Now, see, that's something. If we had like, I mean, it's over a 
zillions of religions out there. And, and it gave you the background or the history or even the mission, you know, statement of, of what, I mean, would you think a lot of people would probably want to go a different route if they knew? But no, a lot of times they're, they're, they're drawn in by the lie, you know? If you paint a good lie, then you, you got a good bait. Ooh, did I say that out loud? Yeah, I did. Okay, all right, let me move on. <laughs> Come on, uh, Alicia. Alicia, thank you for taking notes on Facebook, baby. You ready? Can you read for me? What is an occult? What is a coat? I'm sorry. Let me check my book because my book is a little different than you guys. Is. You got the Kindle. I, no, I got the no. book because it's almost $50. Oh, you almost made me spit my water off. You and Shonda about neck to neck. Girl, yeah. I almost spit this water out. Yes, ma'am. So you said, what's the name of it? Because mine breaks down all religions, Christian science, Mormons, Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism. It breaks Let me hear yours. Let me hear yours. Okay. She stopped on neon uh, oxidon. Ox oxidon. Okay, well, I lost her when we got to uh, this scripture, and then my book changed from you guys' let me tell you what it was. It was page 161 in my book, John 832, and that was it. Then my book goes into what is a cult. That's where we at. That's where we at. Okay, well, you want me to start there? Yes, please. I'm just going to break it down. Okay. So listen. Y'all, for future reference, don't y'all remember these books that we order at least are under $20. I'll never get you guys to pay $30, $50 for or $100 for a book. That is not my plan. I want this class to be less expensive so everyone can afford to be here. Amen. Amen. So remember, I put the information, the website, so that way you guys can use the website to order the book instead of going Amazon because them folks taking advantage of folks, girl, when once they know they got groups of people doing uh, group sessions like this, it seems like they go up even more on the books, okay? Amen. All right, Alicia, I'm sorry. Go ahead, baby. That's okay, Apostle. Uh, what is a cult? A cult is basically a small group of people, two to 10,000 followers, who gather around a person who has a strong personality and a message that speaks to their hearts. They believe in his ideas and treat them as gospel. This is dangerous. God shows you that following wrong leadership can make you take you in wrong directions, even with animals. I remember in the, 19, the late 1970s, a herd of killer whales beached themselves in Florida Keys. When the lead whale died, scientists studied her body and discovered that her inner ears were infested with round worms. The scientists said that the worms damaged this whale's ability to navigate and she swam way off course. The other whales didn't have worms in their ears, but they instinctively followed their leader onto the beach. Likewise, when people join cults, they are following people who have worms in their head. Mm. They follow this leader even when his directions will lead them to certain death. When a cult grows and, become, and begins to study mainstream, it is considered a religion such as Hinduism, Islam, Buddhism, and Christian science, and Mormonism. Although considered religions, these groups are still cult-like and they are not of God because they don't teach salvation through Jesus Christ. The religions that profess to be Christians, such as Mormonism and Christian science, do not believe Christ, brought the ultimate fulfillment of God's promise. They believe the only way to heaven 
is through various works and that their founder received the complete truth. Other religions such as Hinduism, Islam, and Buddhism are based on the revelations of prophets who claim to have received a divine revelation on how to reach heaven. Many of these false religions teach fatalism and followers are, are poor and uneducated because they believe it is their karma or fate to live that way. They believe the course for their lives was determined before they were born. God says you must make choices in life in order to determine how you live and where you spend eternity. He wants everyone to experience the freedom of peace and joy in Christ. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. Ephesians 1, 4 through 6 and 12. How cults operate. When cults seek to recruit new members, they look for a person who is lonely, desperate, disappointed, young, and impressionable. The cult members show this person that they care. They spend time with him. They talk and listen to him. Once the person joins the cult, he is controlled by strict rules and regulations that govern his behavior. The cult demands absolute loyalty and obedience to the leader. They make the new convert change his name, diet, the way he dresses, styles his hair, lives and lives his life. They force him to give everything he has to the cult, including his talents and finances demanding that he hand over his paychecks, savings, and possessions. The cult wants to be the only source a member can rely on. He has a new family and way of life. If someone criticizes the cult, the cult members attack by saying the non-member doesn't understand the message or isn't good enough to receive God's revelations. The final stage, of the new members indoctrination is to saturate him with the cult's teachings, brainwashing him and forcing him to meditate. It says, why choose cults? People get involved with cults for many reasons. Some joins cults because they are disenchanted with society, seeing it as a plastic, shallow and dangerous. Others are seeking a place where they can fit in. A few are truly seeking God, but yearn for the heightened sense of spirituality offered in cults. Many more are simply rebelling against God. The framework of the cult itself is a highly structured society with the cult members considered to be utopian. It is their refuge from a corrupt government, society's devaluation of human life through euthanasia and abortion, fear of military invasions and nuclear war, the breakdown of the family and the influence of popular culture, music, movies, media, etc. Cults offer protection from the outside world because they are isolated from the rest of society. Like Dr. Koresh's cult in Texas and other across the country, many of these groups live in compounds that they defend with an arsenal of weapons. 
The cult members withdraw into their fortress and seal themselves off from the rest of the world. This is dangerous. Whenever you are not allowed to listen to others, to test the prophecies you are given, then you are definitely dealing with a false prophet because God's words tell you that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything is established. Matthew 18, 16. In isolation, radical ideas can't be tested to determine if they're from God. Cults are also a safe haven for people with weak egos. For people who have low self-esteem and are insecure, the cult offers a sense of belonging and being special. People who are unstable in their beliefs about themselves and God are vulnerable to the magnetism of highly articulate, gregarious person who says he has heard directly from God himself. These people want to experience something beyond the boredom of everyday life, so much that they fall under the spell of the cult leader who gives them a law setting them apart from normal folks. Cults are attractive to people who have strong egos and are rebellious. They think they know everything and they don't want anyone to contradict that belief or lessen their self-importance. They don't want to subject to God. They want to be God or one with the universe. Some people who join cults are bored by the church, which on the whole has determined that miraculous power of God is at work today. The power of prayer and the truth of the Bible these people reach out to cults because they are searching for something supernatural. When the church says God isn't capable of miracles, people look for other gods. People are things that do work in the supernatural. Cults offer this either through mystical meetings or plain old magic. Some people who are seeking God turn to cults instead of Bible teaching churches because they are deceived. They want, have never heard God's truth or they have heard it but want something more exciting. These people are especially vulnerable to court cults that offer an altered perception of reality, mystical thinking, and abnormal mental faculties. Often these cults use drugs in their worship or brainwash their members. Now, Apostle, the next section says Hinduism, Hinduism, and it breaks it down, Buddhism, Islam, Christian science, Mormons, and then it goes to how to help. Okay, well, I'm gonna let you do um, those two before you get to Christian science, because we don't have those in our book. We got Christian science, more Mormons, and Jehovah Witness and the Eastern religion. Okay, so you oh, we got Hindu. Oh, wait a minute, it's Hindu, Buddhism, Islam. Oh, okay, so which one did you just say, sweetie, that we didn't have? Mine is Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Christian science, and Mormon, Mormon. Did you have that, and it stops at Mormons. Okay, so it just, they just got them mixed around, that's all. Okay, so so go ahead and do two of them for me, and then I I, I then I can start with the next person, which is Shonda. I think Shonda up next, which is Hindu and Buddhism. Okay, that's right. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hinduism is the world's third largest religion after Christianity and Islam, with more than three hundred thousand members in North America. It is an ancient religion, started about 2,000 years before Christ. The legend says men called Rishis, who lived on the banks of the Ganges River, began to meditate and were met by the supreme being called the Brahman. 
This being told them that their souls originally came from Brahman and were destined to return to him. He showed them how through meditation, good works and pure thoughts, a soul could eventually reunite with him. People began to worship Brahman and all the different gods and goddesses who were part of him. There are thousands of gods and goddesses of Hinduism and still more deities and saints who receive prayers and offerings. They believe animals have souls and many are washed up as gods such as cows and rats. The basic teaching of Hinduism is that the soul never dies but is reborn into either human or animal form. The cycle of death and rebirth continues until a soul reaches spiritual perfection. However, this is hard to achieve because every thought or action will affect how the soul will be reborn in the next generation. Bad thoughts and actions, no matter how small or infrequent, will keep your soul from being united in total enlightenment and peace with the Supreme Being. If you sinned in your previous life, you will be reborn in a sick or poor body. If you were good, helpful, and able to overcome your sinfulness, you will move on to a happier life. These ideas are not right because God says you are never able to overcome sin on your own. You are born with a sin nature and only Jesus can help you overcome sin. Reincarnation is wrong. When Stephen was martyred, his spirit went to Jesus, not to another body. Jesus told the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise because he accepted Jesus as his savior. Luke 23 and 43. Paul said to die is great gain because to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. Philippians 1.21, when Christians die, they go to Jesus, not to another body. Reincarnation shows no mercy, peace, or love. It offers no hope, and it makes you pay for your sins. God does not make you pay for your sins once you've accepted Christ Jesus. You are cleansed in the blood of Jesus. God forgives you of your sins once you repent. He sets you free. He doesn't send you into a life of pain in another body. Your body becomes dust. Your spirit returns to God. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. Buddhism. Out of Hinduism comes another false religion, Buddhism. A man called Gautama Siddhartha, whose name was later changed to Buddha, which means enlightened one, doesn't like, did, didn't like Hinduism. So in 500 BC, he set up his noble eightfold path that he said would take you into Nirvana a state of release into ultimate enlightenment and peace where nothing including pain and other people could touch you. Eight, his eight steps are have the right belief, be resolved, say the right things, do the right things, have the right profession, make the right efforts, think the right thoughts and have the right concentration. Unless followers do this, they cannot reach nirvana and their soul will be released from reincarnations. They receive their discipline to follow the Eightfold Path through meditation, leading an idle life, or virtue and wisdom, and sometimes by conjuring up evil spirits and deities, using magic and spiritual rituals to reach these spirits. The doctrines of Buddhism won't take a person to nirvana. In fact, the eight steps lead directly to hell because they deny Christ's work and make a person work his way into heaven. The path to heaven is a narrow one and is traveled only by the brave. 
you are not saved by your actions, but by God's mercy. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. All right, she done. Okay. Uh, Shonda, you ready? Yes. All right. Pick Islam. up where she left. Okay. okay. Islam. I say Islam. Islam. Islam was started in the early 17th century by Muhammad. Islam's holy book is the Quran, which was revealed in Muhammad by Allah in the cities of Mecca and Medea which are now in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. The basic teaching of Islam is that all the promises of Abraham were given to Ismail, not Isaac. They believe Jesus is a prophet, not the savior because God's son wouldn't die. And even then Muhammad was a better prophet than Jesus because his revelations was fresher. They believe entry into heaven comes by works, not by God's mercy, because they believe that non-Muslims should die. Participating in a jihad holy war to eliminate non-believers will guarantee a person's entry into heaven. They can't ask God for anything but or resign to accept Allah's will, which is to live by Muhammad's revelation. What? They can't eat pork or drink alcohol to do to do so cause spiritual causes spiritual death. They must make at least one pilgrim in their lives to Mecca, Saudi Arabia gives items as acts of charity and fast because sunrise and sunset during Ramadan, the month in which Muhammad receives his revelation. The foundations of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam are all wrong because they came out of the tra trances of their leaders. God does not want you to deny reality. God wants you to make a conscious decision to follow him. It is the devil who works on your subconscious mind, especially through hypnosis and trances. Keep reading. Keep going. Keep going. Christian science. The Church of Christ. The Church of Christ. Scientists commonly called Christian science was formed in 1879 by Mary Baker Eddy, who attributed her recovery from an illness to insights she gained from reading scripture. The doctrines of Christian science describe God as the source of all real being. Therefore, nothing except what he created can ultimately be real. Death, disease, and sin are not considered to be real because they were not created by God. Christian scientists are not Christians. Their name reflects the combination of philosophies. The word Christian is used because New Testament writings play a part in the religious teaching. The word science denotes the concept that reality can be understood and proved by experiencing it. Mormons. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or Mormonism is a religion that is based on revelations that, Josh, that Joseph Smith said were brought to him in the 1820s by heavenly messengers. Mormons believe that Jesus came to America after his resurrection, vis visiting the people who were here. They believe that Jesus Christ established a church on earth, but that is that it was taken away upon his death. They said God's true church was not restored until Smith received his revelations. Like Islam, the Mormon church believes Jesus was a prophet of God, but that Joseph Smith received a letter 
revelation from God that they don't believe in salvation through Christ, but again, through works. Pause, pause, okay. Wow. All right, Fran, if you made it home, let me know, because I need, uh, if not, I, I can go ahead. And... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I made it home. Okay, all right, so you're gonna do Jehovah Witness and Eastern Religions, okay? Okay, okay. Let me get away from my, from my dogs. <laughs> it sound like you got a mouth full of something. Yeah. <laughs> no, you got to eat dinner. I'm messing with you. You just got <clears throat> Jehovah's Witnesses. Because they were always knocking on our doors, I want to spend a little more time in this section. To a Jehovah's Witness, Jesus Christ is a mighty God, but not an almighty God. Christ was the first and direct creation of Jehovah God. The start of his cre creative work. Jesus was the human son of God, the perfect man, but never a spiritual being while in his earthly body. Christ became a spirit again after his resurrection. Jesus was just the son of God, not God himself. Christ was not as great as God. Jesus was virgin born, but only flesh, not deity. Following his resurrection, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Christ was no longer human. He was put to death in the flesh and raised an invisible spirit creature. The Jehovah Witnesses say that Jesus will return as a spirit and not as a physical being. Since no earthly men have ever seen the Father, neither will they see the glorified Son. They believe Jesus came back to earth in 1914, but it was an invisible coming. At this time, it was supposed that Jesus would gather a select group of 144,000 to reign with him in this heavenly kingdom. This, doc this doctrine has since changed. The purpose for Jesus coming was for judgment upon both sinful men and Satan's organization. Hell is viewed as a tomb or grave, not as a place of tor torment or and torture. The doctrine of a burning hell where the wicked are tortured eternally after death cannot be true. Much of their belief system is devoted to refuting the existence of a literal hell. But Jesus said it best, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10, 28. The Jehovah's Witness believe the Holy Spirit is the invisible active force of Almighty God, which moves his servants to do his will. The Holy Spirit is not viewed as a person, but as an energy projected from God and always under the Lord's control. They say that Jesus gave up his physical life for the ransom of all people in order to secure their protection. He gave up his physical body forever. He is resurrected as a spirit. This gift of perfect human life along with its spiritual gift <clears throat> is available to the faithful. Salvation is obtained by first having faith in Jehovah God and Jesus Christ and then by faithfully carrying out God's will through baptism and loyal service. Jehovah's Witness believe that since their people are ambassadors of Jehovah, they need not have an alliance to any human government. This is the basis for their refusal to salute the flag, serve in the armed forces, or in some cases, pay taxes. For the Jehovah Witness upon death, there is no consciousness until the resurrection. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> okay, get it together. 
those who have fallen asleep in Jesus will be brought with him to the rapture, which will happen before the final resurrection. In terms of end times and etern eternity, they believe that from among their faithful, especially those in leadership and high offices, the 144,000 will be chosen to reign with Christ eternally. The rest of the faithful will live forever on the restored earth. This will take place after the great battle of Armageddon, which will be a battle between the witnesses and all others who will meet their final destruction there. In the period between Armageddon and eternal life, there will be a great resurrection. First, the people of the Old Testament, plus those who have never had the eternal opportunity to hear the truth about Jehovah will be resurrected. The rest of the dead will remain without life. <clears throat> the resurrected ones will then be educated for a thousand years. Whew. At the end of this time, Satan will be loosened as a final testing. Those among the remaining who chose Jehovah over Satan will live on earth forever. The others will be annihilated. Wow, oh my goodness. Talk about no mercy. Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult seeking their way towards heaven and are convinced that there is not eternal retribution. Lovingly show them that God offers us the assurance of eternal life now with the power to live a godly life today. Ooh. Eastern religions. Eastern versus Western thought. Hinduism is parent to many false religious practices today in America, due in part to immigration of people from Asia. The Eastern mind thinks differently from the Western. It is important to understand these differences if we are to understand the thoughts behind so many of today's religious practices and see how Satan has misguided souls. Western thinking has been influenced greatly by Socrates, so Socrates, uh, Pla Pla Plato, and Aristotle, men who saw that the earth had a plan and purpose. Judaism and Christianity brought the teaching of the Bible, which added more proof that there is order and system in the universe. The Bible reveals a creator who has a supernatural plan, both in creating man and the world around him. Modern science was born with the idea that there are laws in nature. The scientists saw that there was an order to things. Despite what evolutionists would have you believe, the scientific thinking of today is a result of believing in a personal creator God. Eastern religious, religions teach men that everything that exists in the earth is temporary and only what exists beyond the universe is important. Man wants to reach into this realm but cannot, but can do it only by denying the presence realm in which he exists. Unfortunately, these Eastern religions are taking hold in the West. You can especially see it in things like yoga, based on Hinduism, and in the martial arts, Kung Fu, Tai Chi, Karate, Wan, Judo, and so on. And in cartoons and movies, all these have their roots in Eastern religions. While mar martial arts are advertised as mostly self-defense, parents should especially be wary of the, of the philosophies they are teaching their children. Amen. Okay. Well, we don't know. Uh, that 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 was that was good right there. You know, having your kids in martial arts. I know I had my daughter in uh, self defense class when I told you she came home from college because she was dealing with a stalker um, there on campus. And matter of fact, he wasn't even a a a, a, um, a, a student. 
he was he lived off campus. He was in, in the neighborhood. He one of the neighborhood uh, problem kids, and so um, that is. Um, and like you said, we didn't we don't know, you know, because um, it, it definitely said kung fu, Thai, I, I, you know, karate, judge, all that. I, you know, no people got their kids in that, you know, to help them discipline them and not knowing, you know, how to help to stay in the word or the last two chapters from it. Oh, okay, Alicia just said how to help and stay in the word, in the word or the last two chapters for me. Yeah, it was pretty deep because I think that everybody should at least know what different, these different religions and what they're built off, you know, the, the founders and, you know, and what their belief. You know, you see Fran was tickled pink when she was start reading about the Jehovah's Witness because you see that people are literally deceived. They're blinded. You know, they, they're, you know, so much brainwashing them they are so brainwashed themselves then they choose to do other try to recruit other people to, to, to believe that you know foolishness look jehovah witness got me on a black list they don't even come to my house they just point at my house they like nope you don't want to go that she a pastor you don't want to go to that house <laughs> yes I, I i i i hit them with the word amen i hit them with the word amen so they don't they don't mess with me. They don't even ring my doorbell. I said they just point point put me on the blacklist. Don't that's the house you don't want to mess with. Okay, so we now gonna open up the floor. Uh, any questions uh, pertaining to uh, this topic, which we call the gospel according to Satan? You know, and it talked about the different cults and the religions from Islam to Muslim to Jehovah Witness to Eastern and Western. Um, uh thoughts uh as well so if you guys want to uh if you can you know share with us your experience you know i know me i came from a catholic background went to a catholic school all my life um did, got out of the catholic about i would say in eighth grade we got into baptist that's then then that's when we got introduced into the baptist uh so yeah um I, I I think Catholic should have been one of those, to be honest, one of those uh, religions that should have been on her talked about as well. I just know a lot of not a lot of priests and a lot of the fathers that had did did some some bad things to some young boys. Yeah. So, all right. Um, anybody want to go ahead and unmute? Any questions? Okay, I got a question. I know y'all were talking about martial arts. So is that karate? Is that like is that demonic? Yeah, it's it's a yeah, it's a it's a religion. It's a, um it is demonic. It's a religion. I mean, not so much it you look at the founder of it. That's what I want to say. So so based off the founder of that, I want to say, is it did he say Hindu? Was it Hindu? No, that was yes. yoga. Um, no, that was yoga. But it's some type of Eastern religion where this martial art came from. Yeah, it's Eastern religion, okay? And I think uh, she did cover that. Fran talked about the Eastern uh, religion, okay? So you, you have to think about the God with the low G that you're bowing down to. So think about those different moves, positions, you know what I'm saying? That literally are bowing down to those gods, okay? Now we did not know that, you know, like I said, allow our kids to do this, you know, uh, but we now know when you know, when you know, when you know right, when you when you when it said when you do when you know you'll do you'll do better you'll know what you uh, uh, I'm just must begin look is it that time again because I get tired tongue y'all eight o'clock yeah there yeah. what you say Shonda nothing <laughs> I just start laughing oh when you know better thank you sweetie you do better thank you Liz help me Liz that she got my back she got my back yes. 
So that exactly. So, you know, and one thing, uh, God is not going to punish us, but you got an opportunity now, since your eyes are open, you got an, you know, you can, you can, you recognize this thing. I'm going to repent. I'm going to renounce this thing. Cause I did not honestly know. Okay. That's just like people trying to justify the, what we, oh, we was made from the earth and God created the weed. And if he didn't create, if he didn't want us to smoke it, he would have never made it. Okay. Yeah. That's a whole different story. People is destroyed by, for the lack of knowledge. Yes, ma'am. That's true too. Um, anybody else questions? Come on, y'all, before we end up in. We got 15 more minutes before we end. I just have a quick question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bill. I just have a quick question. Then why do some churches hold like martial arts classes every week? If they know it's wrong, they, but they still host they that. Still host that. Now, I don't think they know it's, that, that it's wrong, sweetie. I, just like a lot of these churches have Christian yogurt. They have this, what's this, this thing they be doing now? What they, Zuma, you know, they don't know, honestly. All they doing is trying to get the numbers up. And, and I just believe that, you know, this is, well, again, people will perish because of lack of, you know, lack of knowledge. So you answered it. I, yeah, I, I doubt it very seriously, Liz, that they know. You know, I just think a lot of this thing, you know, we need to dig into, you know, get the back, the history, the background on stuff before we just bring it into the church. That's just my, my uh, spill on things, you know. You you can't tell me, oh, you gonna you gonna bring a um a a, a prophet in, in the house in safe haven and she uh she's she's one of them uh soothsayers and uh mm, work for uh, I'm just ah that's why our discernment has to be sharpened in these last days. He's gotta you gotta have your discernment on point because the enemy comes so he's so cunning. You know, just like the Eve event, you know, God, you know, you good and well if you eat that forbidden fruit, God, God ain't going to kill you. He, you surely won't die, you know? So he, that's what he do. He perverts things. He twists things, you know? So, so that's what I'm saying. The same thing, what you were saying about the church situation. They, I'm, I'm sure you, you had a, a martial art or a yoga instructor come in and say, you know what? You. You, your your members will be much stressful. They want to be depressed. I'm telling you, once they meditate on this uh, on this specific uh, program with yoga, that medical uh, uh, medical was going to be decreased. They're going to be better health wise. Oh, girl, I guarantee. I know I know the enemy. What exactly how he trying to play it? Come on, anybody else? Don't talk. Game, good game. Good game. So. Uh huh. I just have several things that was just hitting on me when we were going through this. Um, one, how the Eastern believers believe in science, they believe in Socrates and Aristotle, those type of people that did have revelation in some areas, um, but they made them gods. And then um, they believe that what is in space is eternal. And then I think added to that list should have been chakras because now with the new age, they have chakras and it believes in science and it connects the different areas in the body, which teaches us that we're gods and that we can touch, have our third eye open. So that ushers into me uh, with Eastern believers, the new age era. And um, I know she probably wrote this book before all of that really became a thing. Um, but that's one of the things that came to me. Another thing that was amazing to me is how the Jehovah Witness also believe everyone will be annihilated, just like the believers of Islam that believe in jihad, that believe um, there'll be a holy war and everybody will be killed which also we know sounds like the Battle of Armageddon. So that was also like wild to me. And then my daughter has a shirt that's black 
and it has these yellow words that are real bright that say Nirvana. And I was when she wore, wore that shirt, I was like, what is Nirvana? But I never took the time to look it up. But when we went through that and it taught us Nirvana means ultimate enlightenment. And now I'm gonna have to go back and tell her you're wearing that shirt and it's um, giving reference to another God where you're being ultimately enlightened and not by the word of God or the Holy Spirit. And then also, um, I had just had a dream the other night about this, which was so crazy. It came up, but it talked about the occult. And one thing that came to me was Jim Jones and how he took his church out into another country and built their own little town and then made everyone commit, um, commit um, killing themselves. They, he made everyone commit suicide. Yeah under his authority and then um the lord showing me about um the occult practices in the church the church might not be considered per se an occult but we know it can become an occult as you taught today when the leadership becomes perverted with self ambitions and his own ideologic uh, on own ideology on own ideologies that do not pertain or align with the word of God. And so they can become a cult even in the church. It can start out in once a church and now the devil is the leader. And I have seen that in so many churches and the Lord didn't give me revelation till later. He just kept telling me to watch. And I was like, Lord, why do I keep seeing this stuff? And then he showed me later which why the purpose was. And um, a lot of times that's why prophets are liked in the church because prophets have the ability to see and people don't like when you can see because when you come to a certain level, you can even see what the leadership is doing in air and they don't want to be exposed. So often you become an outcast, you become lied on, you become mistreated and even sometimes literally thrown out of the church. But glory be to God for the blessings will outweigh the persecution. And then he showed me about the churches in the old days when they would bring the snakes in and they would show them that they weren't afraid of the snakes and they would allow even the snakes to bite them to show that they were anointed and the poison from the snake would not cause them harm. And so what they were doing is literally taking what was in the spirit realm and trying to man manifest it in the natural. And people called them a cult and people called them crazy because they had the right idea, but they went about it the wrong way. And I yield my mic to the apostle. Go, Alicia. Okay, wow. Ah, oh, that was good. That was good. She was like, boo, boo. She was like in a ring, like, I'm going to get a devil, another black eye. Boo, 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 boo. You know, when she brought that shaka up, I didn't think about that. Because that goes into that, uh, what was the other one I was telling y'all about? The uh, It started K, K U N, Kundalini. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Kundalini. Kundalini. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, that's another one. Uh, so, again you know it's so much stuff out there and and people oh and i'm seeing so many dream catchers now people driving around on their uh mirrors you know this the dream catcher you know i told you i found that out when i went to new mexico uh in, in, in uh france country and they have a lot of those uh dream catchers you know and people ha have it in their house like oh it's so pretty it's so colorful see that that's how the devil does it looks innocent it looks pretty it looks nice to have in your as a decor or decoration in your house but no 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 you're open porters you're opening doors for demonic trafficking to come in and you wonder why you have some jacked up dreams being tormented and crazy nightmares and everything and you think that thing gonna stop you from having dreams is gonna do the opposite it's gonna it's gonna escalate it's gonna build more make it worse i'm telling you 
um third eye opening yeah absolutely third eye opening that was what she was talking about the colony uh, uh okay anybody else Coolini, I'm cool. Okay. You know. Okay, I got, I got two. I got one question, and then I got another question. <laughs> My first question is, don't you know the little bitty bald headed black, little bitty fat? I don't want to say little bitty fat, bald head man that be in the Chinaman. Is that like Buddhism? To be at the nail shop, girlfriend. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Bald headed man. And then you better not touch it. And you better yeah. not touch it. You get thrown out. Wow. He he be smoking a cigarette. He have insect. He be insect incest uh -huh. in, and, and and fruit all 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 the time. Yeah, but go ahead. They feeding him. That's why he fat. Oh my goodness. Okay. And another thing. This kind of like from a video. This is a little bit off the book, but I just got a question. Which I know the man was talking about different churches and stuff uh, in a video, and now I'm seeing because I had went to a church, and um, it, it just it's like it's so many requirements to join. Now they actually ask for application to join the church, and I was just I just went to visit. And they were like you need an application because we need to know all this stuff about you and your gifts and all of this. And so my daughter, uh, a couple months later, we went to this church and we went to, to go see this play, but she was crying and she, you know what I'm saying? Holy, she, Holy Spirit was like dealing with her and she wanted to join. So she went up there for prayer and I took her to the back and then she had, I asked her her experience. So we got home. She was like, um, I had to fill out an application uh, to join. And they, she, I said, did you join? She was like, no, she said, she said I had it. They said that they called her and told her she requested to join. I'm like, what does that mean? Requested to join. So they had to call her and they had asked her what all she do, what's her spiritual gifts, does she speak in tongues, is she filled with the Holy Spirit? And uh, at that time, I kind of got uh, offended because I'm like, well, my daughter's just 19 and she just want to be a member of a church. She just want to go to church and just be, you know what I'm saying, included with the body of Christ. So she called him and then they told her she didn't have the Holy Spirit and they said they was going to call her back. They never did call her back. So I'm like, well, maybe she didn't get accepted. But my thing is, if it's God's house, I'm just saying like, what if it's a homeless person off the street or somebody that just broken or somebody, you know what I'm saying, just about to commit suicide. They walk into a church and want to join is they gonna ask them for application or will they just welcome them into the family of God? I mean, it, it just seems like to me that the church has, I'm not doubting the church anything, but it's just like, we need to just return to the first love, which is God. We just come to God the way we are. We should have to fill out application to join. You shouldn't see what gifts and callings we have. Maybe we don't have any, maybe we just want Jesus. And God, is, if we come to the church, God will clean us up on the inside. You know, instead of we coming, we because we want, you know what I'm saying, people want to be quick to use people, but somebody could be dealing with depression, anxiety, um, uh, suicide, anything. I mean, I just, that kind of like bothered me a little bit, but I just, yeah. Hello. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that. That it's not hurting people out here, and it's, it's so many hurting it's people so many out here, and you know they just want God. Just let them come in and just let God clean them up and 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 work on them and heal them. You know, like where's the true deliverance in the church? That's that's what we needed in the church and the love. That's all. Amen. I agree. I agree. We 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 missed the. Miss the mark. We need to go back to the basic foundation. Come on. The basic foundation is basically not man-made uh, laws or man-made, you know what I'm saying, program, but God's principle. Yeah. And definitely 
Ooh, I, I, I hate to hear that. That kind of put me in the mind of, I remember when me and my husband was going to prayer at our church and I was a member at, the t at that time and me and my husband had separated. And so he had went to prayer with me. I was one of the intercessors uh, that morning, uh, morning intercessors. And so they kind of blocked him from coming because for one, they asked the question, have you joined or are you a member? Have you been going, did, have you went through the, completed the new beginnings class? And I'm like, this man just got out the drug house. Y'all asking all these unnecessary questions, okay? It almost caused him to fall back, to go back. Cause you know, he said it, it was much easier being in the world and being accepted. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't this challenging. It wasn't this hard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, to be accepted. So I, uh, I definitely, you know, know what you're saying. Uh, I thank God that, you know, all that God turned that whole thing around and my husband ended up accepting Christ. We ended up having a meeting with one of the elders because our bishop was actually out of town at that time. So the elder ended up uh, ministering to my husband, prayed the prayer with him and and uh, Terry with him. Y'all remember them days, Terry with him? Yes, he got filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember them days back. I don't know if y'all came from out of Pentecost, but I, I experienced that Pentecost experience where girlfriend, we, we'd be in there all night. I mean, the birds be chirking and everything, it'd be two o'clock in the morning. They, them women, Terry, them men, Terry with those women and men to see that they get their healing and get their breakthrough, you know, deliverance. I, I do. I miss them too. You remember those two, Liz? Yeah, them are the, them are the so, good old yeah. days. In the same way that God and I used to do that. So I'm like, I miss those all night tearing service, the prayer services, and yeah. And Safe Haven should do a tearing service. Uh, when we do have service, say for instance, we get done like, well, Leisha been to Safe Haven. I think, yeah, a few, yeah, Leisha been to Safe Haven. And they don't want to leave. And then the then after they leave, guess what? Another group of women come because they missed out. So it's like I don't sometimes don't get done with it, get out to 8 30, sometimes 10 o'clock at night. So yeah, I I I mean, we, we was talking about doing a shut-in. They was like, yeah, we're gonna bring us, we're gonna do a shut-in over apostles. I will. I said, all of y'all be slain in the spirit. Y'all be so weak at the knees, y'all ain't gonna be able to get out of your sleeping bag. So y'all sure y'all wanna y'all wanna come in the safe haven like that? Cause you be like, it's I'm telling you, I'm not boasting, but I'm telling you, you just feel God's presence. I mean, people come down them steps, they start crying, they can just feel God's presence you know and i thank god that's just a lot of praying and as they said praying and praying and tarrying as well amen anybody else we should do a healing and mending ministries lacking that'll be awesome you know Liz, if you say one more thing if you say okay Liz, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna spit this water out on you <laughs> You know, it's funny that she said that because we were just talking about Gina and I was talking about uh, we were looking for a hotel to do not so much of a shut in, but do a healing and deliverance service. And the name of it was going to be a night of miracles, the night of miracles. I don't care if anybody steal that. It ain't mine. Anyway, God gave it to me. So if they do it before I do it, that's blessings on top of blessings. But I still have to do what God gave me the vision to do. Amen. So Night of Miracles is definitely a, a service that we're going to end up doing. Do it, please. Amen. Oh, man. Oh, Alicia said, Apostle has great hospitality. Yes. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? I'm not playing with you, Liz. I'm messing with you, Liz. I'm gonna be needing some foot soldier. I'm gonna be having you like you. You just don't know. This is labor. We have to labor doing this in prayer and fasting. It is not easy working behind the scene. Amen. Yes, buddy. Y'all have to be suited and booted. 
Because you get some, you get some oops upside your head, get some errors thrown your way every now and then when you when you start stepping into uh the healing and deliverance portion. When I say in the that that in, in itself, folks finna get free. Blind, blind folks about eyes about to be open. Amen. All right. Anybody else before we close out? Anything else you guys have to share? You guys did good tonight. I just want you to know. I appreciate you guys holding it in, holding it down with me. All five of y'all. All five of y'all. It was, it was five, but it's four of us now. Uh, so was it five? I don't know. I'm sleepy. I'll be no taken. That's a list. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and pray out. If I can have so. Shonda, I know you like, girl, you know, you knew I was gonna call you. I bet Shonda said, I knew you was gonna call me apostle. Yeah, she know what she knows it. Shonda, pray us out, baby. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, we just come before you right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, Lord. Thank you for this class, oh God. We thank you for moving, oh Lord, on tonight, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We just pray, God, that you would protect us, Lord, and keep us, Lord, our families, oh, God. Hallelujah, Lord, in the name. We thank you, Lord, for the teaching, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, continue to elevate us, continue to take us to another level in you, oh, Father God. We just thank you, Lord, right now, God. We thank you for peaceful sleep on tonight, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We just give you all the glory and all the honor, oh, God, on tonight, oh, God, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, guys, remember for the marriage and the ones desire to be married, don't forget to get your book online. I think I sent your information to that about Are You Really His Good Thing by uh, Kyra Williams and Crystal uh, Appleby. So y'all want to go ahead and get that book for you married women and the ones desire to be married. And uh, guys, I tell you, this is getting good. As mama says, it's getting good and good. So guys, I appreciate you all participating. I love you guys. You did such a good job. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. We spreading the gospel. So I just want to tell you all the ones that are sowing in seeds and desire to sow seeds of healing and mending ministry. We appreciate every seed. If you want to go to our cash app, it's called dollar sign healing m2 so we appreciate you all that have donated has sown seeds we appreciate it this is keeping us going it's keeping our zoom keeping us live it's keeping us going to the i mean i'm we going to the nation amen amen to god be the glory we love you as well be blessed until we meet again thank you love you guys hallelujah we love you too, also have a good evening and rest the recording has stopped. What'd you say, Leisha? I said, we Leisha, what you have a good night and get you some restful sleep. <laughs> I know I'll be up, you know, I'll be up on the wall early. I got to stop doing it. I know you getting.